Michael Wright is the Director of Health, Safety, and Environment for the United Steelworkers and has been with the Steelworkers since 1977. He is a former member of the Department of Labor's National Advisory Committee on Occupational Health and Safety and is a current member of EPA's Clean Research Advisory Committee. He was trained as an industrial engineer at Cornell University as an industrial hygienist at the Harvard School of Public Health. Madam Chair, thanks for the opportunity to testify. Uh, my name is Michael Wright. I'm the director of the Health, Safety, and Environment Department of the Steelworkers Union. We represent 850,000 workers in North America, um, including the majority of unionized metal and non-metal miners in the United States and Canada. Dennis O'Dell and Jim Weeks talked about the need for this legislation in coal mining. Indeed, much of the Miner Act and much of H.R. 2768 is focused on underground coal mines. That's appropriate, given the terrible death toll in underground coal mines last year. However, excuse me, um, MSHA's jurisdiction extends to many mines beyond coal and to surface mines as well. In 2004, there were 51,000 workers in underground mines, although many of them worked in surface operations like hoists and prep plants. There were 151,000 workers in surface mines. Coal accounts for about a third of our nation's miners, 73,000 out of a total of 220,000. Last year, there were almost twice as many deaths in coal mining as in metal and non-metal operations, 47 versus 25. But in 2005, the year previous, 35 metal and non-metal miners died as against 22 coal miners. So far this year, that pattern's repeating with 15 deaths in metal, non-metal, and nine in coal. Deaths in metal and non-metal mining are as varied as the operations themselves. My written testimony gives several recent examples, all from mines organized by our union, and I'll summarize them. A miner killed in an underground limestone mine with a farm-type tractor that never should have been allowed underground, flipped over and crushed him. Two miners killed in the same surface iron mine in six months, one by electrocution, one when a number of defective bolts on a stabilizer snapped off, causing a large mobile drill to tip over. One worker who was sprayed with toxic and corrosive hydrogen fluoride in an operation you might not think of as a mine, an alumina refinery. Over the past few years, metal and non-metal miners have also died in rock bursts, roof falls, falls from height, fires, explosions, drownings, many other ways. Some of the provisions of the S Minor Act would make a big difference in particular the language on the pattern of violations, unpaid penalties, and penalty assessment, as well as the ombudsman. We need this bill just as much in metal, non-metal, as we do in coal. Miners also die from occupational illnesses, and not just black lung. We now have 58 confirmed cases of mesothelioma among miners on, on, on the Iron Range in Minnesota. Mesothelioma is, is of course, caused by asbestos exposure. That's a rate double the rate expected for the general population. MSHA's asbestos standard is still where OSHA's was 20 years ago, 20 times higher than the current OSHA standard. That's a fact that the Minor Health, Enhance Minor Health Enhancement Act would quickly correct. Workers in cement plants regulated by MSHA are exposed to hexavalent chromium, a potent carcinogen, at a level more than 10 times higher than the current OSHA standard. We've actually challenged that current OSHA standard in court as being lethally inadequate. We think it should be five times lower. That's where the NIOSH recommended exposure limit says it should be. H.R. 2769 would make that level the law. The MSHA hazard communication standard discriminates against minors by denying them information that has to be disclosed to their brothers and sisters in general industry. It's absurd that OSHA and MSHA have different rules governing what health information a, my, a worker is entitled to. H.R. 2769 would fix that as well. In my written testimony, there are some suggestions for fine-tuning both bills, and I hope you give those suggestions some consideration. But the most important thing is that we need this legislation. The mine operators and their trade associations say that would, would have it otherwise. Let's not act too quickly, they say. Let's wait. Well, perhaps they can afford to. Our nation's miners cannot. And let me make one other point to those who think that Congress did enough with a minor act and we don't need to act now. How do you say to an iron miner exposed to 20 times the level of asbestos that OSHA would allow not to worry about that because last year we required that more self-contained self-rescuers 
be required in coal mines. How do you tell a cement plant worker exposed to hexavalent chromium that she shouldn't worry about that? Because last year we fixed another problem that she doesn't have. Every miner deserves protection. So thank you, Madam Chair and the co-sponsors and all the members of the committee for your attention to this important issue.